Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering one of week 3's problem sets, which is plurality. So how is this program going to work? In the very beginning of the program, we are going to give the names of the candidates as command line arguments. And then afterwards, we'll be asked for the number of voters. And then, and then at the very end, we would want to print the winner of this plurality vote, right? So the candidate with the highest votes is going to be printed at the very end. All right, so let's get started. So here we have the source code and just a quick rundown of the code. First and foremost, we have a few library includes. Then we have uh, the, the maximum number of candidates that the user can enter in the program. Then we have a struct with two fields. One is the name of the candidate and the second is the number of votes that the candidate has. Then we have an array of candidates, all right? So this is going to be an array of all the candidates that the user has placed. For example, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Then we have a global variable, which is candidate count. And this will come in handy when we are implementing our um, functions, which is vote and print winner. And these are the function prototypes. And here, now we are in the main program. And in the main program, first and foremost, we are going to be checking if the user has at least given one candidate as command line argument. If not, we tell them the usage and return one. Uh, next, we check if the user has entered more than nine candidates, which is the maximum in our program. And then we'll be looping through all of the candidates and storing the names of the candidates in our array, candidate array. And then we'll be setting the votes of each of these candidates to zero, just initializing it um, in the very beginning. And next, our program is asking the user for the number of votes and here we are looping through all of the voters and getting the vote from the user so for example here you can see uh, first we are asking the user for a vote and then uh, the user writes alice and this is where we want to be implementing our uh, vote function so what is our vote function gonna do our vote function takes in a single argument which is the name right the name entered by the user which we'll be storing in this name string. And then we want to be checking if the name matches any of the candidates in our candidate array, which we initialized right here. And if it does match um, the candidate names, we return true. And if it doesn't, we return false. So how do we do that? So in this vote function, we want to actually be looping through the entire array of candidates and then um, why, why we want to be looping through the entire array of candidates is because we want to be checking if the name entered by the user, which is passed into this function, is in fact in uh, the candidate array that we have created earlier. So how do we do that? For int i equals to zero, i less than candidate count. So candidate count is going to be the global variable that we have set earlier. And i plus plus. Right, so here we want to be looping through all of the candidate names, uh, and if the candidate name is exactly the same as the name ended by entered by the user, we return true. So how do we do that? The first thought that might come to you is perhaps using if the name is uh, exactly equal to uh, candidate i dot name, right? And if it is, um, firstly we want to be updating the vote count, right? So uh, candidates i dot votes, right? Uh, we want to be incrementing it by one because we found a voter voting for this candidate. And then we want to return true, signifying to our main program that we have in fact found a candidate with the name that the user has entered, right? And if after looping through all of the candidate names and we don't uh, actually find a, a candidate name which has the name entered by the user, we want to return false. So if it doesn't enter this uh, if condition ever, then we'll be ending the for, for loop. And then once we enter, once we end the for loop, we will be returning false. And once we return false, uh, the main program knows that this is an invalid vote, right? Because this will be false. And then once we turn false into true using an exclamation mark, we'll be entering this for loop and we tell the user that is running our program that the vote is invalid, right? Um, actually, before I go on, I would like to say that this wouldn't work, right? Because 
uh, as David Mellon mentioned in the CS50 lecture, the C programming language doesn't really compare an array of characters with an array of characters and check if uh, they are the exact string, right? Because to us, it seems like we are just checking strings with strings, but in the back end of C, C is comparing this two as just an array of characters, right? And so to compare an array of characters, which is basically a string, we have to use the strew compare function, right? Uh, to read up more about how strew compare works, you guys can look up manual.cs50.io and from within manual.cs50.io in the string.h function, you guys should see uh, strew compare. And it returns zero if both S1 and S2 is the same. So we input uh, string S1 and string S2, and then we return a zero if it's the same. So we can do uh, something like that. Sure, compare name, and then we pass in uh, candidate I dot name. And if they are exactly the same, which is gonna be um, equals to zero, then we want to enter this if condition, all right? So now that we are done with the vote function, let's move on to print winner. So in this print winner function, we want to print out the name of the candidate which has received the most votes. And we also have to take note that multiple candidates can have the maximum number of votes. So in this situation, we need actually two for loops, right? The first for loop is going to be checking what is the most votes that was received in this plurality vote. And then the second for loop is going to be checking which are the candidates that has uh, gotten the maximum number of votes. So let's just initially create an integer variable of maximum votes. So to explain further in detail on how we'll be implementing the print winner function, uh, take a look on my iPad on the left side of the screen. Of the screen. As you guys can see on the left side of the screen, the screen you guys can see my iPad and here I'll be uh, drawing out a sort of diagram onto how we'll be solving the print winner function. So initially we'll be having a maximum votes uh, variable. So maximum. So we have maximum votes. And this maximum votes is going to be storing um, which candidate has uh, the maximum number of votes. So initially, right, we want to uh, perhaps store the maximum votes to be um, candidate zero dot votes. Okay, so this is just the initialization. We need the max votes to be something, right? And then what we'll be doing is having a for loop, right? And then in this for loop, what we'll be doing is checking if, for example, um, a candidate uh, zero, uh, a candidate I, right? Since we are in a for loop, we'll be using I. If a candidate I dot votes is in fact more than the max votes, what we'll be doing is max votes is equals to candidate I dot votes. And why this works is because we are initializing the maximum votes to be uh, candidate zero dot votes right and if in fact uh, candidate i has more votes than the maximum votes that we have initialized earlier we know that the max votes has to be updated to the candidate i votes right and once again as we are looping through uh, the for loop we are continuously checking uh, the votes of each of these candidates in um, our candidate in our candidate array and if a particular candidate has more votes than the maximum votes, we know that we need to update the maximum votes to be uh, the number of votes that the particular um, candidate has. Uh, if you guys don't get it, don't worry. Uh, once I type out the code, it'll be much more, uh, it should be much more clearer to you. So that is to get what the maximum vote is, right? So this was the purpose of what we did um, initially. And then what we have to do is check which are the candidates that have max votes. And this portion is much simpler. We can just have a for loop, right? So in this for loop, we'll be iterating through all of the uh, voters, right? So if uh, candidate I 
dot uh, votes is equals to max votes right double equal sign then we know that uh, this candidate won right and then we want to print f uh, the candidate name i dot names right so that's the gist of how a program gonna work and now let me just type in my code so first and foremost we want to initialize the maximum votes to be the very first the votes of the very first uh, candidate we have in our candidate array so candidates i with sorry candidate zero dot votes is going to be the maximum number of votes and then we'll be looping through all of the candidates so for int i equals to zero i less than candidate count i plus plus and here as you guys can see on my ipad we'll be checking if a particular candidate has more than the maximum number of votes so if candidate i dot votes is more than the max uh, votes then we'll be updating the max votes to be that particular candidate's votes so max votes you know what i'll just be naming it max votes because it's much more shorter max votes is going to be equals to candidate i dot votes all right and as it's looping through it will eventually uh, be storing the actual maximum number of votes so now that we have found the maximum number of votes the second step is to uh, go through the for loop once again and then uh, find out which of these candidates uh, are matching the maximum votes. So once again, for int i equals to zero, i less than candidate count i plus plus. And here we'll be checking if a candidate i dot votes is exactly equal to the max votes then we'll be printing the candidate's name percent s backslash n candidates i dot name all right so now let's give it a quick run to see if it's all working fine no errors awesome um let's say we have uh perhaps alice bob and charlie alice bob and charlie and the number of voters is five alice charlie bob bob alice and as we can see alice and bob won both in the example and in my program so now before i end this video let's do a quick check 50 to check if everything uh, was done correctly all right so we have passed all the checks thank you thank you guys for watching this video if you guys like this video hit the like button and subscribe if you guys have any questions, comment down below and I'll try my best to help you guys out. And see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.